called Sarah Wilson, soon to be Doan, and this is Kyle. I wanted you guys to meet him. I'm sure you've seen my post. Here's the ring. We are engaged. God, God is so faithful and I'm just really, I was really excited to post this video for you guys because you know how social media is. You put a picture out there and I just wanted to share with you guys the journey because sometimes it can look so, oh, oh my God, we got engaged. Everything's perfect. Look at this movie happening on the in internet. And, but it's not always easy. And I feel like our journey, you know, I've known Kyle for like almost 13 years, 12 and a half years. And we've had so many lessons and so many journeys and things that God's taken us through to get us to this point where we can be in a healthy relationship yeah. that's God honoring. So I just wanted to share with you guys just kind of our story, how we met, and also just what we learned through meeting. You know, I, as some of you have already known, I lost both my parents when I was 14 and 16 and then got adopted by a family in ministry. And so I came with a lot of baggage. And so I had to work through those things. So I met Kyle shortly after I was adopted. Right after I was adopted, I moved to Atlanta with my new family. And he actually moved out when he was finishing college at the same time to serve with my dad's ministry. So yeah, you want to share a little sure. how it came about? <laughs> um, and really moving out to Georgia um, was a, a huge change for me, a huge shift. And I was really trying to press in and become a disciple of Jesus Christ. And mm -hmm. it was a, a, a major transformation happening in my life. And mm -hmm. that's when Sarah and I met and became friends. And we began to develop a, a relationship where we enjoyed being together. We, we like laughing. We like talking. We um, can work well together. Yeah. And we, we really began a friendship there. And that budded into more and we wanted to begin to pursue what it meant to date one another and move forward in a relationship and so I sat down with her her family with her dad and talked to him about my intentions and and really what I got was a yield and uh, it was something that I wasn't prepared for it was something I that I didn't, <laughs> I didn't really want to do but what I needed was to really work on not focusing on the person but the position and understanding what it meant to become a, a good husband become a man who was worthy to walk into a relationship mm -hmm. like marriage and so um, when I was told to wait and and work on that I didn't really want to and it was hard for us but we um, we really had to lay down our relationship yeah. and, and it, it cost a lot for, for us to yeah. let go of what we really felt like was something precious. And and uh, Sarah ended up moving on and well, going, yeah. to, going well, to college. But before that, uh, right when I had met him, like I had said, I had issues. Like I, I thought, you know, I lost my father at 14 and I felt like my dad was my safety. I felt like he was my security. When he died, I felt like I lost that. You know, I knew in my head, okay, God is my father you know, Jesus is my rock and all these things, but I don't think I fully realized that. And when I met Kyle, you know, he was super loud, super outgoing and funny. He just instantly reminded me of my father. And as weird as that sounds, like I felt like this person is my is my husband. This person's gonna protect me. That I, I have to have this person in my life. He has to, and I just started obsessing over it at that time in my life. And I re started really struggling like, well, I have to look beautiful all the time because I have to keep his attention because mm -hmm. I have to have this person in my life. And so mm -hmm. I started really struggling with uh, food issues. Like I must not, I gotta be skinny. I have to look perfect. And I, and my parents saw this. I mean, they're like, you cannot be in a relationship right now because you're putting this person before God and you think that a guy is your safety when God is your safety. And so I'm so thankful that we had my family as like spiritual mentors in our lives to be like, no, like we're gonna protect you guys, y'all need to wait. Mm -hmm. And praise God we listened because so many people don't listen and they get in these like toxic relationships because they're not complete in Christ. Right. So some of you may be watching this video and you're like, I so desperately want to be in a relationship. But maybe you just came to Christ or maybe you're coming out of addictions. And so I just wanna encourage you, if you're watching this video, wait, if God is telling you, um, it's not time yet, or you realizing you have issues, don't, you're going to bring those issues into a relationship. So yeah. So at that time I ended up going off to Bible school for two years and Karis Bible college and just learning my identity and just, I got away and 
went with the Lord and you know, I wanted so much for a guy to go on a date with me and Jesus is like, I'll go on a date with you. Come spend time with me in the word. And I let the Lord start filling in my heart and all those lies that haunted me since childhood. You're ugly, you're stupid, you're this, you're that. God started telling me, no, you're a child of God. I have great plans for your life and just began to cultivate my purpose. Like you're, and he started to speak to me, you're called to the nations, you're called to do missions, you're called to do this, 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 this. And so I'm so thankful that I got away from being in that relationship so I could hear God clearly. I'm like, what do you have for my life? Because I was thinking that this person was my everything and that I have to do, that's my, you know, and God just showed me there's so much more to life than just pleasing people. So I was at Bible school for two years. And then after that, Kyle was still working with my dad and their ministry. And they moved their whole ministry then to Missouri to start a Bible school. So Kyle was helping with that. And when I finished Bible school, I then moved to Missouri and saw him again. And we were friends. So yeah, you want to share? <laughs> yeah. I mean, our relationship took a while to like get started again and, mm -hmm. and that time apart had been good for both of us to grow and to develop some things but you know it takes time and that's a real it's a hard thing for people to really wait mm -hmm. and to trust that God is working on your heart and to put in the time that it takes to really transform and grow and let the Lord shape and cut away the parts of your heart that don't belong and we we became friends again and, and really began to be interested in one but of another. Of course, thing. I still secretly liked him and had a crush on him the whole time. Mm -hmm. I just didn't tell him. <laughs> so in, in 2013, we really tried to go for it again and we tried to begin to pursue a relationship mm -hmm. with one another and and look for opportunities to, to grow together and to develop our relationship. And yet it still wasn't ready. It yeah. still needed time and there were still I was still obsessing over the idea of being with a person mm -hmm. and I still fully hadn't, you know, got to that revelation that Christ comes first and just be sober about things. And there's something really, it was a journey. <laughs> there's something really unique about Sarah that a lot of people don't realize. Maybe you do because you watch her videos, but you know that there's a, a huge calling on her life that her assignment with the Lord is, is huge. And because of that, the assignment against her life from the enemy's perspective is also huge. And so he was really working hard to trap her personality, to trap um, her heart and keep her away from what God was trying to set her free yeah. from. And at the same time, he was working on me, keeping me stuck in a cycle of lust, keeping me stuck in uh, habitual sin, keeping me stuck in uh, staying away from like becoming a man who's actively pursuing real commitments yeah. in their life. And so it's real easy to be passive. Yeah. It's real easy to, to slip away and, and not make the hard decisions to really pursue God yeah. and really be changed. And yeah. God really wanted to work on those things in our hearts still. Yeah. And he was willing to do that. And because of good counsel and because of people who loved us, really pushing in and pressing in with us, we, we had to give up our relationship again yeah. in 2014. We really had to step away from each other and, well, and just trust the Lord. And, and one thing that God spoke to me through the people around me, they're like, you <laughs> need to put God first. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how can I put God first when all I do is think about being with a person, being in marriage. And you guys know, if you're watching this and you're single, how many of you always think, okay, when am I going to meet my spouse? Where is that person? When am I going to, you know, it's a big thing. I think especially with girls and maybe that's like all the romance moves or whatever. But so I just knew, I was like, I cannot be with Kyle until I get over thinking I need Kyle. And I'm like, the only way I can know that I could get over him is to fast from this whole thing. And just to completely stop talking to him, just get away. I'm like, okay, because God, I really do want to put you first. And I really, I know I'm called to the nations, but I wasn't really going to the nations that much at the time. I felt I was very much stuck mentally. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to, I'm just going to fast from thinking I need to be in a relationship. And I told all the girls at our Bible school, I said, guys, I am, I am, I'm letting go of marriage. If God never wants me to get married, then I won't get married. And at that time, I completely stopped talking to Kyle and he started dating someone else. Mm -hmm. And at that time, like I was obviously heartbroken because you guys know the whole story I've told you up until now, but it was such a blessing in disguise because 
it helped me get over him quicker. I'm like, okay, he's obviously moved on with his life. I can't be with this person. And I ended up going to Indonesia for a year doing missions after that. And he ended up going and, you know, and I just realized I'm like, this person's not the person I can marry because they've obviously moved on. And after that uh, year in Indonesia, I just had this revelation. I'm like, no, Christ is calling me to minister the gospel. And he gave me a vision of me like leading a mission team to India. And so when I got back off the mission field, I like ended up, I felt like I was just supposed to, he had written me letters over years. I literally ended up just burning the box of letters. I'm like, Lord, I renounce this relationship. I give it to you. Like I was pretty extreme. I'm like, God, I am literally not going to have any idols of relationships. I'm letting this go. Burned it. So I burned it in a fire, super dramatic. But you know, hey, the people in Acts, they burn stuff all the time when they were coming to Christ. So I'm like, it's fine. I'm letting go of this relationship. And then I left Indonesia and I moved to North Carolina to start a new life. And like literally just a few months later, I had a missions director ask me, hey, will you lead a team to, Indi will you lead a team to India? Just like what God had spoken to me. So after that, as you guys know my story, I just started leading mission teams and just walking in the fullness of my calling. And, you know, and just also working through just the journey of, I felt rejected by Kyle or he left, you know, and all working through just the insecurities and things like, no, like my confidence is in Christ and just started really walking in it. And it's been like an amazing three years of my life, learning my identity, learning who I am, walking in that. And I've dated some people and, but just journeying through that. And I even met someone who I'm like, well, maybe this is who I'm supposed to marry, but you want to share where you're at now? Yeah. So I'm going to keep going. <laughs> we we really had that time apart to yeah. really grow. And I think finally the Lord really changed my heart on the subject of marriage and, and gave mm -hmm. me freedom from my loneliness, gave me a, a desire to like really turn it over to him and wait for the right thing and right, right person. And so um, when this year came around and, and it was near August of this year, like God began to really speak to me again and, and like just stir up feelings in my heart for Sarah that I didn't really realize were still there that I had submitted to him and given up a long time ago um, like she mentioned I'd been in other relationships I had really tried to pursue the Lord and and found um, really unique lessons that God taught me through those relationships sure. and um, not really in don't really like look at back at those things with regret or with a feeling like a sense of huge loss, but really learning God had had lessons to teach me, had things to draw out of me, and and um, and heartbreak is hard. It's not an easy thing, and, mm -hmm. and I mean it would be wonderful if we could walk through life with no heartbreak at all. And I think that God really wants to walk with us that intimately, but sometimes it's really hard to trust Him, and mm -hmm. sometimes it's really hard to press in all the way. And finally, through that pressing there reached a moment where it was right. And I felt that God had really released my heart to really love Sarah and truly care about her and 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 if it was right to pursue her. And so that was where we found each other in, in August of this year. And yeah. Sarah had some like unique positions to, to clarify with the Lord. She had to go through this whole thing of finalizing like getting rid of idolatry in her life and getting rid of um, relationships that, that weren't God-ordained and just being set free in that way. And I also had to just be at peace and, and know that God would provide yeah. exactly what he said he would provide. Yeah, one thing I was really cautious of when I started to feel feelings for Kyle again and I knew I loved him but I was like God I can't be with this person if this doesn't honor you because in the past it didn't honor you you know and that was my big deal like okay I love him but I'm not going to be with him if I'm going to not honor you God right. and I started really walking with my parents and just <laughs> through the lies in the past and I just realized um, I'm not who I used to be I'm a new creation in Christ those demons that haunted me of making myself be a doormat for men and living in the fear of men and p pleasing people and all this idol worship stuff. I'm like, I am not that person. I'm a vessel of the Lord and I know that I'm a child of God and I'm his princess and I'm complete in Christ. Mm -hmm. And once I realized I'm completely new, I was like, okay, so I'm, I'm going to pray about this. And I just prayed about it. Mm -hmm. I visited Kyle's. I just, I'm like, okay, how am I now? And I'm like, I'm completely new. I'm not... 
I can be sober and alert around him. And I realize, like, we could honor God together. Mm -hmm. And this is a relationship that could honor God. And so that's when I felt the green light within my heart, you know. And it's just amazing, too, because I had prayed for this relationship for so many years. And I gave it back to the Lord. Like, I felt like Abraham and Isaac, and I just put it on the altar. And it's just so amazing, you know, that this is a unique situation where God actually gave it back to me. Mm -hmm. And that's something that... You know, we just want to share with with you, with with anyone that would watch. We we don't we didn't get it perfect, yeah. And we screwed it up more often than we got <laughs> it right. But God is yeah. faithful, he and is He faithful. truly loves His children, and He doesn't take into account all these wrongs done and like hold them over your head. He really wants you to be free. Yeah. He really cares about your heart being transformed and changed. Mm. And that's what he did in my heart. That's what he's done in Sarah's yeah. heart. And man, how gracious has he been to bring us back together and to, to match us up. And we really have a heart to go and see God transform the nations. We have a heart to see God nations, disciple yeah. um, young people like yourself. And we want to share our stories so that you can know that man, God is wanting to work in your life. He wants to shape and, sh and and chisel away the parts of your heart that don't belong to him that yeah. that aren't honoring to him and he wants to create in you a vessel that's worthy of his spirit because he seeks to dwell to to dwell yeah. in you and to be the life that pours out of you and yeah. so we really want to do that together and yeah. we see just the value in sharing this story even the hard stuff yeah. even the even the failures even you know the mistakes that we made when we said this or we said that, we we didn't know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we just have really tried to pursue God and and look, and this is where He's brought. Yeah, us. and I just want to encourage you. Maybe some of you are new believers and you're tempted to date people that don't know Christ. Like I just highly encourage you. Like we have so much peace that we know that we're running the same direction, that we are equally yoked. And it's so important that when you are choosing a helpmate for your life or whoever you feel like is in your heart, make sure that they love God more than they would love you, that they would be so in love with the Lord. Because when both people's foundation is founded on Christ, it's so much of a healthier relationship. And I see that even in us, like we're just, it's a completely new relationship. Yeah. And so I just encourage you, like if God has you in a waiting season and you're not married yet, or maybe you are married and your marriage is in like shambles right now, let Christ be your center. Let Christ be your fulfillment. And the one, you know, maybe your spouse not, might not say you're beautiful, but God says you're beautiful. Let him, let the Lord, your maker, fill that love tank and everything else will be healthier from that. But yeah, we just want to bless you guys with our story and also just share more lessons we learn in the future and just share it to you guys and we love you and thank you so much for like all your comments and kind words and prayers and blessings for our future we were so overwhelmed by just all your love and so anyways just thank you so much and we just love y'all thank you very much god bless <laughs> all right bye <laughs>